Now, one of the long-running campaigns of this programme, and indeed something that I feel very strongly about, is the base at RAF Scampton. Guy Gibson, the home of, of course, the Dan Buster Squadron. Now, there's been a High Court judgment today, and we now go live to former, sadly, RAF Scampton to speak to GB News East Midlands reporter Will Hollis. Will, what have we learned from the court today? Yes, well, it's the start of the judicial review, which is going to be a two-day hearing. Today is the first day. Tomorrow will be the second. And it can take RAF Scampton in one of two directions. The first is a £300 million regeneration, investment in aerospace technologies, and a guaranteed preservation of the heritage of the Dambuster for generations to come. In the other direction, it could be the answer to solving part of a difficult chapter in the government's handling of the migrant crisis, easing the pressure on hotels which right now are costing £8 million a day. The two things that we've heard that are uh, interesting, let's say, Nigel, are the first part, which is something that we expected to hear, that the council of West Lindsay District Council and Braintree, which represents uh, RAF Weathersfield in Essex, they said that the use of uh, air bases by the Home Office for asylum seekers is unlawful. We expected to hear that at the judicial review. Yeah. One of the things that we didn't expect to hear, though, was that there is an accusation that the time that they will be using these bases for is much longer than the original one year. It could for, in fact be as long as three years. We didn't hear a hell of a lot from the Home Office. We're going to be hearing a lot more from them tomorrow. But they in statements have said that they think that they are following the right planning requirements. Here of course at RAF Scampton there are still many people that are sleeping outside of the front gates in tents with their signs saying that we don't want this to happen here but they are optimistic about the judicial review but they say if it doesn't go in their favour if in a few weeks that we find out that RAF Scampton and Weathersfield will be used to house asylum seekers permanently for that three year period they say that they aren't going anywhere Nigel Interesting, I was going to ask you Will, you know, you've spent more time in Scampton recently than I have um, I mean, I, I wonder whether perhaps within the community they were beginning to just accept that they've lost and it's going to happen. But you're, saying that, you're saying that's clearly not the case. It doesn't seem to be. I think there are two elements to the question you've just asked. People are saying that they aren't going to give up the fight, that they're going to be here outside of RAF Scampton. People that are from Scampton, but also people from as far south as Devon. But the other thing that I've been hearing today from the local residents of Scampton Camp, which is the former married living quarters of the RAF base, is that they're prepared if people do move in. And the way that they're preparing is ultimately security measures. Uh, one person showed me a personal alarm that they have, new cameras, bigger fences, and the way that they describe it is because they have a fear of the unknown about what is going to happen if asylum seekers do move in here, Nigel. Yeah, I pissy the village of Scampton. Will Hollis, thank you very much indeed. And clearly the fear there is very, very real.